All right guys, so we're here on my garage floor and I'm gonna show you how I roughly test straw or hay that I get to use as mulch in my garden for persistent herbicides. This isn't a foolproof way. I don't get it chemically tested in a lab or anything, so let me just give that disclaimer right now. <laughs> Um, but this is a method that a lot of people use. I've seen this method other places, both written and in video form. So what we're gonna do is actually start some seedlings. This is, a, this is kind of a longer way. Unfortunately, I don't have any small like seedling starts uh, that I really want to sacrifice on this experiment. So we'll just start some bean seeds and I'll tell you why in a second. But if you had like small plant starts that you didn't mind sacrificing, you could do this method with those and not have to start brand new seeds. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that option right now. So persistent herbicide, there are tons out there and I'm not gonna name a specific one. This is grass hay. I don't know what type of herbicides they use specifically on grass hay. But what I do know is that there are certain plant families and plants that are specifically sensitive to broadleaf herbicides. Those are gonna be your curcubits, so melons, cucumbers, your nightshade family, potatoes, tomatoes, um, and also legumes, so beans. Fortunately, beans are also one of the quickest sprouting and growing crops that you can test this with. So, double whammy, beans are highly sensitive and they grow really quickly, so you'll get results quicker than if you tried to start a potato <laughs> in, uh, with this method. So I'm gonna fill up this tray right now. I'm, I'm only gonna start six of these. Uh, not, I'm not gonna waste this whole tray on beans that I'm gonna end up tossing anyways. I don't have the space to grow them inside. So I have several beans here. Most of them I actually like. This one, I don't use a whole bunch of. It's the contender bush bean. I know it's a famous bush bean and it's a really, really fast producing one. It's 50 days, eh, not, whatever. He's my sacrifice bean. So I'm just gonna put one bean in each, in the six cell tray that I filled up, and then we'll get to the testing part. Okay, so all the beans are in, and now it's time for the testing. So you can use anything really. I have a lot of mason jars, so I like to use mason jars for everything. But what we're gonna do is we're going to infuse water with this hay. <laughs> This is good and full. I can probably get about half of a mason jar of water out of this when it's completely filled. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using this hay infused water to water the seedlings. Now I have very small uh, six cell trays, so I don't need a whole lot of water. If you had larger ones or you were trying this on a larger seedling, you might want to do a couple of these jars. They do have to sit for a little while. So if you have backups, you can continually water your seedling as it needs it. Now I did start six for a reason. Um, I am depending on these seedlings sprouting for me to be able to see if there's any damage. If this was so laden with herbicides, it could affect the seed to where the sprout doesn't even come up. If I didn't have any seed sprout out of this, I might be concerned, but I also wanna leave myself some room for error because a lot of times I, sow seeds and they don't germinate. Um, so there's a lot of user error on this as well, which you have to account for. Um, I don't want to assume that because three bean sprouts come up and the other three don't that I have herbicides. I want to monitor the three that come up and then I'm going to continually water them through, through the duration of their life with this hay water and see if they continue to uh, grow and thrive. If they start to die, if they start to die off, turn yellow, turn wilty, give any signs of herbicide damage, obviously I know I've got a problem. I might conduct the test again just to be sure. I've never had an issue before. I've used their hay before. They don't get it from a specific grower that I can call and ask, so I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. There's only one, li uh, there's only one feed store in this town uh, that sells straw by the bale. And I, uh, I tried to call them and get a hold of the producer in Arizona who grew 
the straw to see if they used herbicides, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, I was given the run around. I never got an answer. So basically, I just test all my stuff like this now. I don't believe it has failed me yet. As far as I can tell, I do use this for mulch, so it would be evident on several beds. I know I did have a problem with my tomato beds last year, which I still did not figure out, but we'll just have to continue on in the gardening season and see how the rest of the plants go. But let's fill this with water. All right, so I'm gonna leave this for a couple hours and then I, I'll use it um, if I need to water these, otherwise I will continue to leave it in here. The water will end up turning kind of yellowish. I don't want this to get to the point that it's moldy. I will use all of the water before then. Um, this isn't an exact science. <laughs> uh, if there is a, you know, research article about this exact experiment, I would love to know it. <laughs> so far this has worked for me. This has worked for a lot of other people. So I highly suggest you give it a try. I know there's a lot of us out there that don't have access to, you know, certified herbicide free products for your garden. So this is a way to help mitigate that. Well guys, I'm gonna get these guys inside under the grow light. We will continue to monitor this. Thank you for joining me on this vlog today and catch you on the next one.